गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू ऑल इन लेक्चर नंबर सिक्स ऑफ मॉड्यूल टू सो बेसिकली वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी रिलेशनशिप टाइप्स सो वी विल सी रिलेशनशिप फ्रॉम वन व्यू वन एंड इन नेक्स्ट लेक्चर वी सी द रिलेशनशिप टाइप्स फ्रॉम व्यू टू सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्क्राइब रिलेशनशिप टाइप्स from a view view number 1 so if we if you recall the last chapters last sessions in the last sessions we try to understand fulfillment in human human relationships and we studied we saw that feelings are at the core of the relationship and in this whole process we noticed that there is the prominence of feelings in the relationships and we studied these feelings as expressed values and established values so in last sessions we studied nine established values and nine expressed values though these feelings are equally expected from all human being around us in complementarity yet when we live in different relationships we can notice that some feelings are prominent in some relationships and some other feelings are prominent in other relationships so in this class we will try to understand which of these feelings are prominent in different kinds of relationships so let's start the lecture and see so as i told you that in last lectures we studied nine established values and nine expressed values yani ki sorry we studied total 18 values okay so in this context we can see three different kinds of relationships so basically many people are living around us and we can see three kind three kind of age groups around us one is we can see relationship with those who are elder to us another we can see relationship with those who are around the same age another relationship can be seen with those who are younger than us so you can see three kind of age groups around you so those who are elder than you like father mother paternal grandparents maternal grandparents etc and in the same age group you can see relationships like brother sister husband wife coworkers etc and with those who are younger than us we can see relationship like son daughter siblings children grandchildren etc so these kind of age groups you can see around you if we briefly discuss about the feelings what feelings are prominent in these three category so we can see that relationships those who are elder than us so we can see with older people they because they have more understanding and more responsible than us they are fulfilling their responsibility towards me and we get lot of assistance from them so we can say in these relationships the feeling of reverence glory and gratitude are prominent it also becomes clear that if we develop the right understanding and on the basis of this we live in a right manner with definite conduct then those who are younger than us can be seen to develop feelings of gr gratitude glory and reverence for us similarly if we see relationship with those who are around the same age in these relationship we can see or we can observe the prominent feeling would be trust respect and affection in the same manner relationship with those who are younger than us because whenever we found younger than us we try to help them we try to guide them 
सो फीलिंग ऑफ केयर एंड गाइडेंस आर प्रोमिनेंट इन दीज रिलेशनशिप्स विथ दिस बैकग्राउंड विथ दिस डिस्कशन वी कैन सी वेरियस प्रोमिनेंट फीलिंग्स इन रिलेशनशिप्स इन दिस थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ रिलेशनशिप्स दो जो आर सिमिलर इन एज दो जो आर यंगर देन एस दो आर ओल्डर देन एस सो हु आर हु दो दो आर ओल्डर देन एस वी कैन टेक हेल्प फ्रॉम देम वी कैन टेक देयर टेक बेनिफिट ऑफ देयर एक्सपीरियंस दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग वी कैन डू विथ ओल्डर पीपल so relationship in which we are providing help care and guidance are at the core feeling and when we are receiving the help the core feeling would be reverence glory and gratitude so in all relationships the need for trust respect and affection is always there so this is a minimum requirement while interacting with any age group of people so feeling of trust feeling of respect feeling of affection is the must in relationship with this background we can see seven types of human human relationships so we can see relationship with parent child we can see relationships with teacher and pupil similarly with husband wife sibling friend friend relationship guide colleague and societal relationship relationships to ensure undivided society and universal human order so in this lecture we are going to study these seven kind of relationships and we will see what feelings are prominent in these relations so let's start with relationship between parent and child so when we live in relationship with our elders when we see when we live with our parents what kind of feeling will be prominent in this relationship so relations like parent grandparents uncle aunt from both paternal as well as maternal sides come as a parents and children relationships as elders they take it as a responsibility for nurturing and protecting the body of their children along with developing the right understanding and thoughts so you must have observed around you in relationship of parent child the parents try their best they try best to ensure the nurturing of our body they try best to ensure right understanding in myself so it can be noticed that nurturing protection along with developing right understanding in the children can be done efficiently based on the feeling of care and guidance so what would be prominent feeling in this relationship is care and guidance okay so if children has the feeling of gratitude towards their parents for the cooperation availed through them so feeling of gratitude come in the come into the pictures okay so on the basis of receiving care and guidance from parents the children develop the feeling of gratitude so gradually as the child is able to see excellence in the parents it develops the feeling of glory and reverence so basically if we see the responsibility of parents towards children so what would be the main responsibility to ensure right understanding and right feeling thought in the self of the child and next one is ensuring nurturing and protection of the body of the child so the more children observe the elders working for their excellence the more they have the feeling of glory towards them they feel proud of them and aspire for achieving excellence under their guidance so based on this the feeling of reverence emerges in child so thus we can say the feeling of gratitude feeling of glory and feeling of reverence commonly exists in relation of son and daughter son and parents living with these values children can carry on the duties expected by their parents so in this relationship what would would be the prominent feelings prominent feelings would be care guidance reverence reverence gratitude 
glory these feelings would be prominent in parent and child relationship so you can take pause for 2 minutes and ask yourself investigate in yourself whether are you able to see feeling of reverence for your parents feeling of gratitude for your parents and also you are able to observe that feeling of care feeling of guidance is prominent in your parents for you so for example if mother cooks food for you are you able to see that she is cooking food with the feeling of care she is cooking food because she wants to nurture your body are you able to identify this feeling or are you focusing only on the food taste of the food so this you can investigate in yourself so whenever whenever you see any movement in the family whenever you see any action in the family they are governing these these actions are being governed by some feelings are you able to observe those feeling behind the actions of your parents if you do if you observe these feelings then there will be harmony in your family so it's an exercise for you observe your family actions observe your parents and see are you able to find out the feelings behind their words are you able to find out right feelings behind their actions so this you can do at your home let's move towards next relation that is teacher and student relation so in this relation what would be the goal of the teacher the goal of the teacher would be to develop right understanding in the student and facilitating the student is the teacher's role so primary role is of a teacher is to facilitate the understanding of the student so to fulfill this role the feeling of guidance is essential so with the feeling of guidance a teacher can facilitate his or her student with this feeling the teacher is able to fulfill this role effectively so what would be prominent feeling in this relationship so one feeling is guidance which is prominent in this relationship so the teacher is able to consistently make effort to develop the understanding in the next generation similarly what would happen at the side of a student the student has a feeling of gratitude for the guidance being received from the teacher so once a student observes that the teacher is making effort for their understanding the students feel feeling of gratitude because he is able to see guidance being received from the teacher so the student also has the feeling of glory and reverence for the excellence the teacher possesses so in this relationship feeling of guidance feeling of reverence feeling of glory would be prominent so again you can take pause for 2 minutes and ask yourself whether you are able to find out these feelings when you study with your teachers are you able to see feeling of guidance in the teacher and also you are able to see the feeling of glory and reverence in you while taking education from your teacher so if you are able to see these feelings the teaching process will be smooth okay so you can take pause observe yourself investigate in yourself that are you able to find out these feelings in teaching process let's move towards another feeling so this is relationship between among siblings so this is a relationship between people of similar age that is same generation in this relationship we are primarily making an effort for mutual development so with the relation in relation of brother sisters what would we do we primarily make effort for mutual development we try 
to improve competence we try to develop consciousness of our sibling so while doing so we work together helping each other and for this relationship there is a need of feeling of trust there is a need of feeling of trust <clears throat> there is a need of feeling of respect there is a need of feeling of affection so the feeling of respect is necessary as we have many things to do together in the family we live with the responsibility to focus on mutual development so if i have more understanding i am committed to help other if the other member has more understanding i am willing to take help from him with this way we can live harmoniously so again you can observe yourself whether you have feel you ensure feeling of respect you are able to evaluate rightly are you aware that mutual development is in the focus in this relationship so what we what would we do if mutual development are in focus in this relationship we will live with responsibility and if i have more understanding i am committed and able to help the other if the other has more understanding i am willing and able to take help from him this would happen if we are able to identify these feelings so many times you will observe you do this kind of things because these feelings are prominent in you so in this relationship feeling of trust feeling of respect feeling of affection are prominent that's why you try to improve competence of your siblings that's why you feel committed to help your sibling because the feeling of trust feeling of respect feeling of affection are prominent in this feeling again you can take pause and ask yourself investigate in yourself are you able to identify these feelings you can ask yourself why i am trying to make effort to improve competence in this relationship because feeling of affection feeling of respect is prominent in this relationship that's why there is a natural motivation in you to help your siblings okay so let's move towards next feeling next relation relationship between friends so in this relationship we live like siblings we make efforts for mutual development so what is the difference between this relation and the previous relation the only difference is the sibling belongs to the same family while friends may not belong to the same family they are from different families so families are different but if we see at the level of feelings we will have similar kind of feeling it means for friends also we will make efforts for mutual development in fact if there are efforts for mutual development then our friendship goes well and what would be the peak of this relationship the peak of this relationship the zenith of achievement in this relationship is being able to live like siblings so as a friend if we are able to live like a sibling this is the zenith of achievement in their relationship one indicator of friend friend relationship is that i feel same as my friend is feeling so we feel the problem of the friend as our problem and make effort to solve them just like we would do for our own problems so if our friendship is based on feelings if these feelings are in the center then we live like a sibling and we feel problem of my friend as my problem and i try to resolve them resolve my friend 
सो अगेन यू कैन टेक पॉज फॉर टू मिनट्स एंड आस्क योर सेल्फ हैव यू दिस काइंड ऑफ फ्रेंडशिप आर यू एबल टू एंश्योर म्यूचुअल डेवलपमेंट इन दिस रिलेशनशिप आर यू मेकिंग एफर्ट फॉर म्यूचुअल डेवलपमेंट सो इन फ्रेंडशिप दिस फीलिंग इज एट द सेंटर दिस इज अ प्रोमिनेंट फीलिंग एंड विद दिस फीलिंग देयर वुड बी अ नेचुरल इंक्लिनेशन इन यू टू एंश्योर डेवलपमेंट ऑफ योर फ्रेंड टू हेल्प दैम इन एनी कंडीशन इट वुड हैपन नेचुरली इट इज हैपनिंग बिकॉज द प्रोमिनेंट फीलिंग इज ट्रस्ट प्रोमिनेंट फीलिंग इज रिस्पेक्ट so if this is the prominent feeling then your friendship goes well okay so now let's move towards another feeling husband wife relationship so in this relationship we have the responsibility responsibility to make effort for mutual development and along with this effort of mutual development we are preparing ourselves to participate meaningfully in the societal order so as a husband wife we are working for mutual development and we are also ensuring meaningful participation in the societal societal order we are participating harmoniously in the larger order we are able to see our participation to ensure harmony in the society so if both have right understanding before marriage then the main role of the husband and wife is participating in the societal order so if both are awakened both have right understanding both have explored themselves before marriage then after marriage their main role would be to participate in larger order societal order so husband and wife can make effort for definite family goal so in this context if we see the feeling of respect is primary so when there is a feeling of respect between husband and wife there will be transparency between them it means now they are evaluating rightly each other so transparency between them husband and wife clarity of family goal and making effort for it jointly this is a prominent similarly the third responsibility would be production of the body for the next generation if required and while production of this next generation we are committed to nurture and ensure right understanding in the next generation so in this relationship also there are feelings like trust respect affection we have enough scope to live in harmony at all levels through the relationship of husband and wife so basically this relationship is a learning point where we can learn different feelings we can observe ourselves are we able to ensure feeling of trust feeling of respect feeling of affection with each other are we aware of our participation in the larger order so if we do we if we are govern if this relation is govern with these feelings then definitely family live with a definite goal and family also participates in the larger order okay so let's move towards next feeling guide colleague relationships so if we are talking about guide colleague relationship so definitely the feeling of trust respect and affection in the guide for his or her colleague is essential because guide is going to guide his colleague and it can only happen with the feeling of trust respect and affection okay and for the colleague having the feeling of glory and reverence for the guide is essential so at the same time feelings of reverence and glory 
are very essential for the colleague. So guide has a sense of complete responsibility and have a good program to execute it, makes plan and chalks out the steps for implementation. And what would happen at the level of colleague? The colleague recognizes the responsibility for a part of the program and helps to fulfill it. There are various roles to be fulfilled, which the colleague recognizes and fulfills with commitment. So there are various roles to be fulfilled and it can happen with the feeling of reverence, feeling of guidance, feeling of care, feeling of trust. So if these feelings are prominent, this relationship goes smooth. So again, you can pause this video for two minutes and ask yourself, are you able to see this prominent feeling in this relationship? If you are able to find out these feelings and if you investigate, you will find out that these feelings are basically our motivation to guide others. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see another feeling, another relation, societal relationships. So, this relationship can be seen between service provider and the service recipient. So, why this relationship? Relationship for undivided society and universal human order. So, some people ensure policies in the system for the smooth functioning of the organization and the remaining rest of the people abide by the rules of that system. So, as a service provider, it is of utmost desirable to shoulder up that responsibility sincerely and while continuing this responsibility, treat every member of the organization with justice and equality. So justice refers to seeing everyone at the same level, at the level of purpose, program and potential. So the main role of service provider is to live just and to be organized within and help others to live in organized ways by facilitating a conducive environment so that everyone can live in relationship and harmony. So for this it is essential to have the clarity of existential order, to have the clarity of coexistence, to have the clarity of interrelatedness, particularly working for society. So, living according to the societal laws and providing such an environment to all and inspiring them to live accordingly is the role of service provider. Okay. So, whosoever is engaged in participation of any system, whether it is a dimension of health, regulation, education, sanskar, protection exchange, justice preservation, at all places, the service provider has the main role. The main role is to provide such a conducive environment so that everyone can participate in the larger order through various dimensions to ensure harmony in the society. So what is required to ensure this? To have understanding, to have right understanding is at the root of all this. So, it is necessary for the service recipient also to live according to the norms established by service provider. So, that is why the feeling of affection plays an important role between the service provider and service recipient. In the feeling of absence of this feeling of affection, there is a possibility of exploitation, domination, cheating, etc. So, if there are feeling, if there are discrimination, then it would be difficult to ensure harmony in the society. So, for societal relationship, clarity of coexistence, clarity of interconnectedness, interrelatedness is required, feeling of affection is required, and definitely feeling of trust, respect is common in all relationships. Okay. So let's move 
another very interesting point what about strangers we live with many people with whom we are not in any of the seven types of relationship as i described it earlier for example when we are walking on the road when we are traveling in bus or train many people we come across with whom we are not in any of these seven relationships so what feelings are required in this situation definitely the feeling of trust is always felt so everyone expects the feeling of trust at least feeling of trust so with this we are able to be helpful to each other to the extent we have the feeling of respect and affection so in everybody's life there are many opportunities to help to others for example in case of road accident we see while traveling accident takes place so it is quite natural and it is quite expectable that the other person should help us so if we have feeling of trust if we have feeling of affection then it would be quite natural to help the other okay so feeling of trust is required in every relationship so if there is a strange strangers the feeling of trust is always expected so the, the feeling of trust is unconditional and uncontinuous trust on intention is essential for own fulfillment so it is easy to see you can investigate you can observe yourself you feel happy at the moment you have trust in mean mistrust so with the feeling of trust we can be helpful in every state situation to everyone and with the feeling of respect and affection our participation is even more fulfilling mutually fulfilling so again you can take pause for 2 minutes investigate in yourself ask yourself whether do you have at least a feeling of trust for everyone if you have this feeling of trust you will be helpful to everyone unconditionally at least you will have thoughts for helping others definitely it is going to depend on situation whether i will help other or not but at least with the feeling of trust i will have feeling of feeling and thoughts to help the other person so let's sum up uh, the whole lecture so basically we identified three age groups people around us so relationship with those who are elder than us relationship with those who are around the same age relationship with those who are younger than us so when ever we interact with others some people we find elder than us some people we find of same age group and some people we find are younger than us so these three relationships taking in background we can divide seven types we can categorize relationship in seven uh, category number 1 parent and child teacher pupil husband wife sibling friend friend guide colleague societal relationship so we studied prominent feelings in parent and child so feeling of gratitude feeling of guidance feeling of affection similarly we studied prominent feeling in teacher pupil relationship husband wife siblings friend friend guide colleague and societal relationship where clarity of coexistence is required clarity of interconnectedness is required so that's all from my side students so let's meet in the le next lecture and in next lecture we are going to study view 2 so this we have studied we have seen the relationship types of relationship from view 1 and in next lecture we are going to see kind of relationship with another view so have a good day thank you very much 
ठीक है सर